Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and this short video follows on from one I did about initial setup of a new printer for photo printing and looks at a bit more about how you first get into printing and some of the things you need to remember and some of the things to avoid uh, if you want to save wasting a lot of ink and paper because Printing is a great thing to do, but a lot of people get discouraged early on because the prints just don't come out how they want. Um, people say, well, my prints, they're not properly matching my screen. Well, prints can never match a screen. I've, I've looked at color management elsewhere, but I will keep coming back to this point. Uh, looking at a screen and hoping to just go print and have a print come out that looks identical to what's on the screen is a pretty much forlorn hope. Um, you can make great prints, but you have to remember that the print is not the screen and vice versa. Um, but apart from that, first of all, this printer here, uh, this particular one under this pile of prints here is an Epson XP15000. One of the ones I've tested in the, in the last few months. Um, this is not about Epson printers, this is not about Canon printers. It's about if you've got a new printer and perhaps if you're new to printing, things you want to take note of. First of all, um, whilst you perfectly well can connect a phone up directly to a printer, on cameras you can connect them up and print, if you get nice pictures out of it then consider yourself lucky. Um, it is simply not a consistently good way of turning your images into prints. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to do some editing. And part of that comes from that thing of the screen is not the print. Because the screen, not just this screen, that goes for the screen on the back of your camera or on your phone or on your tablet or whatever. Um, some form of adjustment is likely to be needed. Now, I've mentioned before that when you first set things up, print some test images. Um, test images, known test images, I've got loads of them on the uh, North Flat Images website you can download. But test images give you a way of understanding the printer settings. So you could use them as a basic test uh, because it doesn't matter about the screen, you don't edit them when you print them. You can use them as a basic test that everything's working okay and that your print setup that you want to use for printing your files is working okay. And you can also use it for deciding which settings work best. Now, without looking very closely at these prints here, apart from the fact that I can feel one of them is on a much thinner paper, um, there is pretty minuscule difference between these prints. The differences are there and they are due to the different types of paper and how I've changed the settings of the printer driver. However, don't expect huge differences uh, by changing the settings. So, for example, choosing the absolute highest resolution settings, the finest detail settings on the printer driver. All that happens in most instances is that the print takes longer to come out of the printer. Uh, you may be able to see a difference if you get a magnifying glass out. You may be, well be able to see a difference if you get a, um, a loop out or a hand lens such as this one. Um, however, I'd observe that in all my years of selling prints, not one person who has ever looked at a print close up and looked at fine detail has bought a print. Uh, the people who do that are other photographers. Um, real people who buy prints, who put prints on walls and things, are not interested in viewing their print at about two or three inches distance. They're interested in what it looks like from a reasonable viewing distance on a wall or whatever. Just remember that when you get into printing and you read perhaps on forums people talking about depth, micro contrast, D-max, all these technical terms. Um, they're mostly completely irrelevant. They can be useful, but the moment someone starts talking about DMAX about prints, they're no longer talking about what the picture looks like. Um, they're talking about technical stuff. But anyway, we'll skip through that one. Your monitor makes a big difference. Um, I try and get a good quality monitor. This is a BenQ monitor. I've, I've tested a few of theirs, uh, particularly even larger one recently. And it's uh, very high qual image quality. 
uh, you know, other expensive monitors are available as well. But every single image that I send to a client or I print goes via the monitor. So it's worth getting a reasonable monitor. A reasonable monitor on its own is not all though it needs calibrating and profiling. Now the calibration profiling, sometimes simply just called calibration, is done using a hardware device such as this. This is an X-Ray i1 display. Um, that uh, just measures colours. Uh, there's the data colour version of it in its box. That's the Spider X. There are loads of these. I've, I've done reviews and some videos about profiling. But suffice to say, you want to get your monitor into a known accurate state and you do that with one of these things. By the way, you don't need to leave these attached. Um, and if you have a monitor like this, it comes with calibration software. Now that calibration software will use one of these devices, but it's better to use the monitor maker's calibration software than it is to use the software that came with this. Um, or the or the data color one. It's just you know, you're you're going for a high end monitor, so it's definitely worth making use of all the features. I've said before that when you start with printing, don't go overboard on buying print papers. By all means, after you've done a few test prints and things, um, get some sample packs, see how they perform. But perfect your printing on a few samples. They don't need to be large. They don't need to be like A3 plus size here. You can do it on A4 perfectly well. But perfect your printing using just a few basic papers from the company that made the printer. So Canon papers for Canon printer, Epson papers for an Epson printer. And that's the key to, to doing it. You print small test prints. You learn the correct settings, how to take your image to go from what you've got here to what you're printing. Now, in this instance, um, it's kind of very dark. You know, I've obviously deliberately gone for this black background. Um, there are issues in trying to print bright colors like this. So when you're doing your first print, don't go for strong, brightly colored images like this or this. Go for something, I hate to say, a bit more bland, because uh, it's one of my favorite pictures. Go for something that's a little less extreme, like this picture, this taken in Colorado, um, of a storm front, uh, sagebrush just starting to sprout, and uh, there's some cottonwood trees with just the first flush of green on them. Um, I'm saying this because you almost certainly can't actually see it via the video, but pick a fairly normal image. The reason I say that is because when you're printing, certain features are more difficult to transfer from an image you see on screen to print. In particular, in this instance, the bright colors, these traffic lights, these uh, various streaks of lighting, some of the deep colors here, this is quite a tricky image to print well. It's not difficult, but you do have to take care of it. Whereas a, a more normally toned image like that, or this larger one, also taken in uh, Colorado, there are no real extremes of color, brightness or anything. These are much easier to print. Um, obviously this is an A2 size print. Uh, it wasn't printed on this print here. This was done on an Epson P900, if I remember rightly. But uh, there's the difference between A3 Plus and A2, which is why personally when people say, what printer would you want, Keith? Um, I go, a big one, because uh, big prints work. But, so you practice printing an image like this, and um, now I'll turn it the right way up. Uh, it's actually trees uh, on snow, aspens, uh, with shadows from uh, low angle sun on it. Um, Probably looks in on this video much the same when I had it the wrong way up. But anyway, there you go. It looks a nice picture when you actually see the thing. So there we go. We've got some basic printing to start off with. Now, I'm shooting this video uh, with LED lighting uh, here. I've got 
some daylight coming in from some windows here. It's cloudy, but um, there's some daylight. So it's mixed lighting. How do you decide whether your prints are too dark, too bright? The easiest way is to view them in the place where you're going to hang them. So um, if you were going to put prints up in a room lit like this, then this lighting is ideal for checking your prints. Now, I will come back to this when I look at soft proofing and uh, other things in, a, in future videos. But suffice to say, find somewhere consistent to do your print checking, to look at how the brightness has come out. Because this print will look quite different in the room through here, which has currently got no light switched on. The brightness, darkness of the viewing does make a difference. And that is something you might want to allow for when you print, when you edit your files. And this comes back to perhaps one of the most important bits. And I mentioned earlier when I said don't print directly from a phone or a camera or a tablet, is editing. Now, I'm not going to recommend anything particularly for editing. I happen to like Photoshop, but then I've used Photoshop for over 20 years, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, I know what it does. I use it for all my testing and things like that. It works great. Uh, some people like Lightroom. Personally, I really don't like it. Uh, never have done, but that's just a personal opinion. I'd also uh, suggest trying something like Affinity Photo. Not only is it relatively cheap, it's exceedingly good and it's fast catching up with what Photoshop can do. Um, I could do much of my work using Affinity Photo. Um, I don't just because I'm used to using Photoshop, um, but I do test these other bits of software as well. There are other editing packages as well, but whatever you do when you print, you need to use ICC profiles. Now I've mentioned print profiles elsewhere and I'll be coming back to this in other videos. Uh, the profiles are what characterise the paper, ink, printer combination. They're in a way a sort of translation document um, that allows you to go from what's the image itself through the printer driver to droplets of ink. And that's all this is, droplets of ink. The software decides where the droplets of ink are going to go and what, how, what mix they're going to be. And part of that is comes in for using a printer profile. If you start your testing using uh, basic papers, so for this Epson printer, maybe a luster paper or gloss paper if you like gloss, and maybe a matte art paper of some sort. So they don't need to be big sheets, A4 is fine. You'll find that Epson and Canon for their printers and papers provide profiles. Now printing with profiles is, it won't necessarily make your pictures always come out spot on correct. Colour management is not about perfect colour, some illusory concept like that. To me, colour management, and that includes calibration of your monitor, profiling of your papers, less so cameras, but I have I've mentioned that elsewhere. But colour management is about making things come out right first time more often. Colour management gives me the confidence to print an image with strong colours like that and be fairly confident that what I'm working on will produce a print that I like. Note that I don't say a print that looks like this because the best looking image on the screen may not produce the best looking print. Um, so a bit more of a subtle, that's one of the reasons I say to avoid when you're first testing things. Uh, avoid images like this and to some extent images like this because to get good prints you need a bit of editing experience. But there we have it, so that, that's, that's the basics. Um, this goes for even if you decide to do black and white as well. Um, essentially, start simple. Profile, calibrate your monitor, Use printer profiles for the paper and don't go overboard on getting hundreds of papers. Because essentially, if you don't have the experience of printing on just a few simple papers, how do you know that one print is better than another? How do you know that you try a new paper, the prints look great? How do you know that's just not because your previous prints were incompetent? Um, 
I make mistakes. I take a while to learn a new printer. I get lots of printers to test, lots of papers to test. I mess things up occasionally. And that's, I do stuff like this. This is part of my job. I'm an architectural photographer and sometimes I provide prints. I also sell a few prints as well. Most of my work is supplied digitally, but even so, I use colour management to make sure everything comes out right and consistent. And um, I practice and that's it. Um, it can be a bit tedious, uh, but well worth it in the long run and causes far less problems, wasted paper, wasted ink down the line. So hopefully that's been of some help. Um, if you find these videos of use, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, please ask questions as well. Um, I do my best to try and answer questions that are asked connected with the videos, particularly because they often give me ideas for other videos that I might, have, might not have thought of. So um, thank you very much.